Hey everyone, um, thanks for coming. Um, I'm Chris Rizzo and I'm with the Measurement Lab Project and I'm our um, Program Management and Community Lead. A new title for me since we just shifted and became a uh, uh, fiscally sponsored program at Code for Science. Uh, and so we're really happy about that and being a part of that family now. My uh, goal with this talk is to expose you to a measurement lab and our data set and see what people are doing with it and um, see what you might be able to do with it um, if you're interested, uh, but also to give kind of an overview of the project. Um, so um, we are an open data platform uh, that provides a measurement service, an internet service measurement uh, uh, platform. So we host measurement tests on servers around the world and then people can run tests against them to understand the characteristics of their internet connections. Uh, so their speed, uh, latency, you know, how fast is your internet essentially. Uh, and then all of the data goes into a public domain data set that's uh, available openly to anyone. And a big part of my job is supporting people who want to use that data. Um, the GitHub repo, well, our organization is up here on GitHub, so you should check those out. And uh, there's a lot of repos in there, so if, if you're getting into the code, just come up to me and we'll talk uh, more about what you're looking for. So a, a real quick quick start, if you're in the room and, and you want to just start diving into ideas, code, what's there, uh, I wanted to put this slide up here to highlight a couple quick things. We have a visualization website that aggregates our data by location uh, in different locations around the world, and a couple of little screenshots here uh, illustrate that. Um, comparing ISPs, in this case, uh, in Portland over the last six or eight months. Uh, on this little graph, and then the right hand, or this side, under the data, uh, it shows um, you know, that you can access that data via the N API. So that's a quick way to get started looking at our data um, if you want to start, if you're building your own applications. Just start using that REST API with, um, or download raw data. And then, of course, if you want to dig in more deeply and do your uh, look at individual test rows for a specific um, uh, location or time in time period, uh, we have all of our data is stored in BigQuery, and there's a quick start guide that we've written that helps you get started with that. And of course, the support address uh, if you want to contact me or some of my colleagues to get help. So our mission is uh, here on this slide, measure the internet, save the data, and make it universally accessible and useful. This is quite huge and aspirational, uh, but it keeps us moving uh, toward a real, that really aspirational goal. So I'm gonna talk about uh, some of how we measure it, how we save the data, and then we'll switch and look at the accessible and universally accessible and useful part, because that's, I think, the, the, bigger, uh, the bigger thing that we can't do by ourselves. And this slide kicks off this, uh, this part of the talk because our community is made up of a lot of different types of communities, from companies who uh, donate uh, money or server space and transit to our servers, uh, to the folks who design research, or research experiments that are run on the platform, uh, to the policy space and academics who want to use this uh, data as a secondary resource in their, in their work. Um, so tons of different types of audiences, and this is a big challenge for us to try to you know, balance uh, meeting all of their needs. <coughs> We run a bunch of different types of experiments or tests, uh, and these are some of the, of the ones that we've hosted over the years. The uh, most uh, highly used is this network diagnostic tool from, that was originally built by Internet2, and it's a speed test. Um, it you know, measures much like some of the commercial speed tests you might uh, have encountered, like speedtest.net or Ookla. Um, um, but all of that data is openly available and all the code is open so people can integrate that code into a web uh, site or a, a software or hardware product. Um, these are all um, tests that have come from the academic community uh, primarily. So folks studying internet, uh, f studying the internet and about 10 years ago started to think, well, we need a global platform to try to understand how to make the internet better. And that's how MLab eventually came to be. 
Um, so we have quite a number of tests that originate uh, through the computer science and network measurement, uh, internet measurement community at different universities. Over the last 10 years, we've grown uh, from, and this is sort of a platform growth slide to show sort of how long we've been in existence and where some of the milestones of where we've placed servers over time. Um, we have servers in lots of places, um, about 130 locations, uh, 500 plus servers, not in all areas of the world, so we're working on that. Um, but um, you can see we've got a, a pretty heavy uh, North American and, and Europe um, but a smattering across the rest of the world. All this means that users will be directed to the test based on their geography. So if, if you're in South Africa, you'll be directed to our servers in South Africa, in, unless you use a tool that lets you select that. Uh, color in this case is a bit dated. Uh, it, excuse me, sorry. Yeah, color, so these dots essentially come from the map on our, our website. Uh, red is, are some servers that we are, that are currently offline, or when I took this snapshot. And then because each of the servers hosts a, um, a series of experiments, some of them are fully uh, available and some were not at this time. So that's the different shades in, of green there. We do all this work through a variety of partnerships. And so, you know, different companies uh, can, and, and organizations can tr contribute in a variety of ways. And this is just a smattering of the different logos from our site. We get a lot of corporate funding uh, and, and we're working on sort of diversifying that. Um, but many, much of our hosting already represents that diversity from uh, the global research and education network uh, of which some of these uh, folks um, represent. Now the volume of data is, is quite large. So we currently get about 2 million uh, speed test measurements a day from the network diagnostic tool. And we hit a milestone two years ago with a billion rows uh, of data. So it's quite large um, and that doesn't include any of the other tests that, that we run. So there's a rich, rich data set uh, for researchers and advocates to use uh, to understand internet service in a variety of ways. I am gonna get to the data, just wanted to call that out. Um, uh, and what, what some of the people are looking, looking uh, using it for. Um, the real spike in volume over the last three years came when the Google search team integrated uh, NDT into a little widget. When you search how fast is my internet or internet speed test, Google provides this little widget where you can run, your, run our speed test. That data goes to MLAM and it provides a service to anybody who's doing that search. Uh, so that's that huge spike. And we have other integrations that have also you know, helped with, with getting test volume. Um, so uh, I'm going to show some of those, but Fingbox, if you've used the Fing app, uh, that is a measurement of kind of network quality, speed. They have a little device that you can place in your home that runs a speed <coughs> test every so often and gives that information to their, uh, their users. MLAB also has a Chrome extension uh, for Google Chrome. And if you'd like to run our test and save the results locally, that's a quick and easy way uh, for you to um, gather data about your own uh, connections. So those are more software and website type things, but some web integrations are actually quite interesting. Um, this is a screenshot from the Canadian Internet Registry Authority, and they have built this uh, uh, internet performance test portal that integrates our test and some other types of uh, network measurements uh, like DNSSEC and things like this. Um, and then they've mapped the data in Canada across, um, you know, in, in little uh, hexagons down there on the map. This is a really great partnership because uh, it, not only did they integrate our test, but they also host and sponsor servers in Canada. Uh, so this is a really good example of the type of partnerships that we, uh, we that help us do what we do. So that starts to get into the last part, which is how do, how do we make it universally acceptable, accessible and useful? Uh, and we can't do that alone. It's a huge, huge goal. So what we do that is also through partnerships um, and supporting developer communities who want to use our infrastructure as a service and uh, provide the data to their projects um, or analyze it in some way. Um, so how is the data used? 
is a good segue to this because it gets to the end point. What are people doing with this data? And this is a link uh, to our publications page on our website where we try to list that some of the different types of things that people are doing. And so from left to right, we have an academic paper that was recently published, which is using our data to estimate household uh, speeds and tiers of service uh, in, from the University of New South Wales and some academics who are working there and they published a nice uh, methodology. Uh, we did a paper with uh, Alliance for Affordable Internet last year where we took our NDT data and segmented it by mobile and non-mobile tests and then kind of looked at the aggregate uh, for a short uh, exploratory uh, report with them uh, on mobile broadband service in various countries. And then uh, uh, the third example is, uh, is an example of an advocacy organization that's looking at uh, media ownership and consolidation issues in Venezuela. And for the last year or year and a half, we've given them some data exports to support their journalism, th their advocacy. And this particular one was around their elections, uh, their special elections last year. So they were looking at um, public media and um, how, uh, how much did independent media, uh, independent journalists, how much of a voice were they getting? And they were doing some traditional type of election monitoring as well, sending people to polling places and seeing if they were you know, asked to stop taking pictures or something. Uh, and then they also looked at uh, internet speeds uh, in, in aggregate for the different areas in Venezuela uh, around those election dates. We, we don't often go out and seek to find these, these publications, but some, most of the time people just tell us about them. Um, we're not doing a ton of data mining. This isn't on that. We're, this is an area where we could, we could expand. Um, another project that uh, actually brought me out here last week was, this, uh, was a project that we're doing through the Institute for Museum and Library Services, where we're taking our client test code and putting them on small computers, placing them in a library, and those Computers are automated to run our tests at regular randomized intervals. And that data will then go to a, digital, a visualization platform that we're building for that project. Um, it's a really exciting connection to the, the uh, on the ground use of why, wh why will we have this? Why will we do this? To help uh, public institutions understand um, the types of speeds uh, that they're getting. So now we'll get into a few more web integrations, and this is kind of illustrating a few mapping initiatives. So combination of like a website that runs our speed test and then aggregates the results on a map. Um, in this case, uh, and in, in some cases asks um, communities to answer a survey, a uh, set of survey questions. So these are targeted more at cities, uh, regional governments uh, that are you know, wanting to understand the state of broadband in their communities with an open data set and open source code. And so what they've done, and we've done in partnership with many cities and, and, and groups, um, or to build, you know, uh, build this website or help them work on it uh, to build kind of a community engagement tool and uh, like planning and analysis tool. So we partnered with um, this year and last year with the Center for Rural Pennsylvania at, and Penn State University, the Institute for Local Self-Reliance, and they are building a report and have published that back, uh, shared that back to the state legislature in Pennsylvania. And we've done some other um, smaller scale like pilot studies in partnership with Seattle and some other uh, rural communities in uh, Eastern Washington state. And then uh, this is another example that was built not by us, but was supported by MLAB. Uh, Louisville, Kentucky did a, a website like this that aggregated our data by zip code. The same idea, take a test, answer a survey, give the community data, uh, aggregated by zip code in order to really understand like where they have good service in their in a community and where they don't. And they leveraged that to decide where to build out fiber to areas that were underserved. And so this was a really big digital inclusion win that, um, and this code is now being um, taken up by um, the Tech Association of Oregon and they did a hackathon last two weeks ago um, 
where they're trying to build a national model of, uh, uh, out of this code uh, to aggregate and, and share, uh, make it something that many communities can use. So that was, that was a great uh, opportunity there. Uh, but the same sort of thing, you know, they're running a test, doing a survey, looking at the results and making decisions about it. Um, one other example in the same vein uh, that we published uh, and worked with uh, the Merit uh, Research and Education Network in Michigan State University this year. Um, the same kind of idea, but they hooked in a homework gap component where uh, they built the site and then they are engaging with a, a sampling of K-12 districts across the state to take home an assignment and run a speed test from their home to understand like where to kids in the in their homes you know what is their service like and a couple other screenshots there and then uh, this is another example that's looking at the large scale at the US so this is a project that's soon to be published uh, from our our friends at Open Technology Institute at New America Foundation in DC where they're looking at uh, speeds uh, from measurement lab in comparison uh, and difference between our data and the FCC's data that ISPs submit about where they provide service uh, and how fast it is, is it and what type of um, speeds is it. And then the last example is sort of a, um, it's a mix. So right now, uh, this is a great tool for aggregating data of various types uh, um, including MLab's data um, called internetisinfrastructure.org and the i3 Connectivity Explorer. Um, so uh, the developer of this product, has this, this uh, site, um, it has done lots of gra uh, GIS work to bring in many different types of shape areas and to bring in uh, uh, data from the Census API and the ProPublica API, um, lots of different data sources to understand uh, and, and look at public data alongside of MLab data and other data sources uh, to really get to um, interesting planning um, outcomes for uh, for communities. That, that That's his goal. So it, it looks at, count, you can look at counties, you can look at sub-county regions, you can look at tribal communities, you can look at you know, micro-urban communities uh, and shapes and areas. It's, it's a really powerful tool. Um, and so what does all this mean for us um, is the next bit. Um, <coughs> MLab's supported quite a number of these initiatives and, and that's why we're here talking about our data and with you because you know we, we have supported lots of different individual initiatives, but to really scale and grow the power of our data in communities, thank you, um, we are wanting to bring all these things together into a, a unified set of community tools that give uh, communities and organizations options for uh, doing what they need to do for their um, for their communities and so we're planning a, st a developer and stakeholders convening to scope and build that project and if you'd be interested in that we can talk more about that but that's kind of the the reason we I wanted to share kind of the ecosystem of different tools um, just dipping into the possibilities of what we can do um, with our data um, and to give a few examples and now I'll just stop talking and see what you have to say. I'd love to take some questions.